The space shuttle program is announced on this date. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is January 5th, 2024. It is the fifth day of the year. There are 361 days left. It is your first Friday and your first week in the 16th day of winter. You have 74 days left until spring. Today is going to be a very brief video. My voice is trash from having COVID again, and uh, I just don't want to miss any upload dates, so it's going to be really short. Hope you understand. Today is National Bird Day. Nature lovers, bird lovers, and bird watchers across the country annually recognize National Bird Day on January 5th. I've never been a bird watcher, but when I was in Panama, we kind of, you know, you a lot of time on your hands. You're in the middle of the jungle. We would spend our time trying to figure out what certain birds were. We had killer binoculars and rifle scopes. Believe it or not, we spent way too much time looking at birds while I was there. I had a good time, but I don't know why I never did that when I came back to the States. All right. Let's see what else January 5th has given us. 1914, the Ford Motor Company announces the eight-hour workday and minimum daily wage of $5 in salary plus bonuses. That's 1914. That's like making about $150 a day now. Not the best, but for the time and the way the work life, family life was done back then, this was a definite step in the right direction. You know, Henry Ford was a true businessman, but some of the moves he made, you kind of think, you know, you know, there was a business angle to it always, but you think, well, maybe he was kind of a decent guy. Who knows? 1933, construction on the Golden Gate Bridge begins in San Francisco Bay. 1957, in a speech given to the United States Congress, U.S. President Dwight D. Eisenhower announces the establishment of what would later be called the Eisenhower Doctrine. 1972, President Richard Nixon announces the space shuttle program. Now, this one kind of surprised me because I thought that was all Ronald Reagan. Then as I thought about him, I'll know because it was going when he was there. But I was shocked that it was actually Richard Nixon that announced it. 1993, the oil tanker MV Bear runs aground on the coast of Shetland Island, spilling 84,000 tons of crude oil. Released on January 5th, 2015, How Wolves Changed a River. If you've never seen this video, this is one of the best videos I've ever seen on YouTube. This video goes over how they removed wolves from Yellowstone National Park, like back in the 40s, 50s, or whatever, and this caused a lot of problems. The elk and deer population exploded. Well, this led to all the fields and pastures just being grazed away. Other animals almost completely disappeared because the wolves were gone. They thought they were saving things, but they were actually ruining things. It's called a tropic cascade. So when they reintroduced these wolves, they found out that the elk and the deer wouldn't hang out in these valleys and by the rivers and the meadows as much. So the banks of the river got stronger and the river started flowing properly. Of course, this led to beavers showing up in greater numbers and adjusting how the rivers flowed by building their dams, which if they built their dams, now more amphibians showed up and more geese, things like that. Well, with more grass, all of a sudden they found out that field mice and rabbits started showing up again because when it was just flat ground with nothing to hide behind, they kind of hid in the woods and they dropped their numbers. Then, of course, now, since they have things there that they can eat like mice and rabbits, more hawks and more eagles showed up. Very interesting. It's just like a four minute video. I'll leave a link in the description area below. You should definitely watch that. Born on January 5th, 1928, Walter Mondale, Minnesota Senator and 1984 Democratic nominee for president who served as vice president of the United States under Jimmy Carter from 1977 to 1981. He also served as the U.S. ambassador to Japan from 1993 to 1996. When he ran for president against Ronald Reagan, it was the seventh largest defeat margin of any presidential race. It was 18.21%. That was the margin between win and lose. The biggest defeat in history was 1920. Warren Harding, Warren G. Harding, defeated James Cox by a margin of 26.17%. Died on January 5th, 1994, Tip O'Neill Jr., liberal Democrat who served as the Speaker of the House of Representatives from 1977 to 1987. During his 34 years in Congress, he also served as the House Majority Leader and House Majority Whip. He was an avid baseball fan and player when he was younger. His real name was Thomas Philip O'Neill, but he got the name Tip because he would foul so many balls when playing baseball that the other team would call him Tip or his friends would call him Tip on his 
team. Like he just got the tip of the ball. It's an interesting way to get a nickname. I got a nickname when I worked at Netflix and you'd think this is a military nickname, but there's a lot of people that know me as Graveyard Jim. The only reason I got that is because I was the gym that worked the graveyard shift that answered all the escalations and stuff like that. So if you called and asked for a supervisor, you got me most of the time. If you called Netflix at night, sounds like a name you pick up in a war zone or something. Tip O'Neill died from cardiac arrest at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston on January 5th, 1994 at the age of 81. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day. Be nice to each other.